So once the myeloma diagnosis is suspected, we need to do several tests to confirm the diagnosis. And these tests may show that the blood count is low, something called anemia. There may be high calcium level in the blood. There may be impairment of kidney function. Sometimes x-rays are necessary to look for any bone abnormalities. And many times we need to do more sophisticated tests, such as an MRI or a PET scan. And almost all patients with myeloma require a bone marrow biopsy, not just to make a diagnosis, but to also fully understand the makeup of the myeloma cells and if there are any gene abnormalities in those cells. Over the last uh, 10 to 15 years, there have been several major advances which have vastly improved our understanding of the biology of the disease, particularly the gene changes that happen in the plasma cell that turn a normal class plasma cell into a cancerous cell, and also our understanding how these gene changes might affect the prognosis and uh, treatment of myeloma. Understanding these gene changes in myeloma cells allows us to predict the prognosis, and this is sometimes called prognostication or risk stratification. And there are several ways to risk stratify. In Mayo, we generally consider three disease categories, and we call them standard risk myeloma, intermediate risk myeloma, and high risk myeloma. And this terminology is self-explanatory. As far as the treatment is concerned, here again, there have been a lot of advances in the last 10 to 15 years the average survival of myeloma patients has more than doubled in this time frame. And for many patients, myeloma can be managed as a chronic disease. However, unfortunately, myeloma still remains incurable. 